Hello everyone, welcome back to the DevOps Essential series. In the previous episode, we showed you how to promote the changes across the environments without using change sets. We use Salesforce CLI and GitHub to do that. In this final episode, I am going to show you how to promote the changes even without knowing Salesforce CLI. We will be using DevOps Center. I am Satya Sekar, a developer advocate with Salesforce. If you haven't watched earlier episodes, let me tell you that DevOps Essentials is a series that covers the fundamental concepts. It helps you design and implement the DevOps best practices for your Salesforce applications. Be sure to check out the earlier episodes. In this step-by-step -step video, we'll see how to install the DevOps Center, how to create the projects and connect version control system to it, how to create pipelines and configure environments for the pipelines. And then we'll see how to promote the work items through the pipeline. You can choose to install DevOps Center in your production org or any other supported org. You cannot install DevOps Center in a sandbox for various reasons. One reason is when you refresh the sandbox that causes the loss of DevOps Center projects and associated records. Not only that, when you clone the sandbox, it creates multiple instances of managed packages which can lead to confusion and synchronization issues. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to enable DevOps Center. Which allows you to install the package through a guided process. You can install the package for system admins. I have clicked this button and installed the package. You can verify it in the installed packages. The next step is to create a connected app. The connected app provides access to DevOps Center in the app launcher. You can refer to this help documentation for the basic information required to create the connected app. I'll share all the links we refer to in this video in the description below. You can also see here in this section, we have step-by-step -step instructions to enable and install the DevOps Center in the org. So far, we have installed the DevOps Center and created connected app. We can further add users and assign necessary permissions following these steps. While we add users, some of the common personas to consider are DevOps Project Manager, who is responsible for creating the projects, configuring the environments, and adding users. A release manager is responsible for promoting the changes across environments through pipelines. Any user with proper permission sets can work on the DevOps Center. The users also include the team members who work on the changes. We work by creating projects in the DevOps Center. When you create the project for the very first time, you are prompted to log in to the GitHub repository. If you don't know what is GitHub, you are covered. You can watch the second video of this series where we covered all about the source control and GitHub. Okay, now let's go ahead and create the project. You can launch DevOps Center from the app launcher. Let's see how we create a new project. You can give a unique project name. And then you have two options to connect to your repository. If you select the first option, the DevOps Center creates a repository in your connected GitHub org with the SFDX project structure. You can also select the other option, that is the second option, in which case it is going to connect to an existing repository. Optionally, you can also give a project description. Let's give a unique name for our project, say DreamHouse app. You can notice that while I'm typing the project name, it populates a repository name in the connected GitHub account. As I said earlier, the DevOps Center creates a repository for you in the SFDX project structure. Today, I'll use the existing repository of the DreamHouse app used by our team throughout this series. Hence, I'll choose the second option. 
Let's enter existing repository URL. Let's give a description and save it. You can see our project now listed here. Let's click this GitHub repository URL. And there you can see the project in the SFDX project structure. The next step is to connect your release environment. Ideally, it can be your production org. Here you can see that it auto populates your environment name with your project name plus release. You can change the name as long as you don't use spaces. You can select production org and click the login button, which launches the standard Salesforce login window. Once you log in, you can see the release environment URL listed on the project page. Now it's time to set up your pipeline. You can set up the pipeline by opening the project or clicking this link under all environments. On this pipeline page, you can see a sample pipeline template. You can use this template or customize it by deleting or adding more stages. If you have watched the first video, we established a pipeline with associated environments. You can use a developer, developer pro, partial copy and full copy sandboxes for appropriate stages. We'll use a similar pipeline in the DevOps Center. If you are evaluating the DevOps Center or just getting started, check this page. You can explore various options to use developer edition and scratch Ops instead of sandbox environments. You can learn more about pipeline stages in videos one and two of this series. You can add one or more development environments by clicking this button. You can enter an environment name, say Dev4, and log in. It takes you to the test.salesforce.com where you can log in. You can add a developer sandbox or a scratch off. I'll add my developer sandbox, which has the Dreamhouse app installed from this repository. As you can see, it can have one or more stages between development environments and the release environment. Each of the stages has a name like integration, UAT, staging, etc. You can also see that the DevOps Center has already connected with the release environment that we just logged into and also connected the GitHub repository's main branch. Also, let's connect the environments and specify the branch for all other stages. Let's click this connect environment button, give a name for your environment and choose between production and sandbox. It launches a standard Salesforce login window where you can log in once to connect the environment. Next, you can click specify a branch, give a unique name for your branch and let the DevOps Center create the branch for you. Follow the best practices while naming the branch. You can also check out the video for, for branch naming best practices. If you have already created the branch, you can select an existing branch. As I am working on an existing project, which already has branches for my stages, I will select the appropriate branch. You can also choose to mark one of the stages as a bundling stage. The bundling stage is used to group a set of changes together and version it while promoting. I'll fast forward and set up all the stages similarly. Make sure all the stages are correctly configured and then click the activate button. You can check your activated pipeline in the environments tab. You can create work items and assign it to the team members. For example, let's create a work item to redesign the property explorer flexi page and assign it to a team member.
the team member can open the devops center and see the assigned work item once you open the work item you can see a kanban showing the status of the work item you can also see the details tab the activity history tab that shows the log and the changes tab where we'll be working now as a team member you can choose to work on the connected devop or even from outside devop center you can also change the work item status to never if the work item is not feasible let's select the devop and proceed you can see that it has created a feature branch in the repository with the work id let's now open the development environment and navigate to the property explorer page in dreamhouse app here you can see the filters property tiles and the property details components etc let's make changes to this page as per the work item and save it let's go back to the devops center here you can see that there are changed files available to be pulled let's pull those changes you can see that the property explorer file has changed let's select the file add a comment and commit the changes you can also watch the commit status here once committed you can ask for review in which case devops center creates a pull request in the repository you can now view the pull request in the github repository once changes are approved you can toggle the ready to promote button Now we are done with the changes and ready to promote the changes to the next environment in the pipeline. So let's go and see. Let's click the pipeline and there you can see our work item under the approved items in the stages tab. Let's select the work item and click promote selected. You have various options for promotion. You can choose to move the delta or all the metadata that is in the next branch. You can also choose to run the test. Let's accept default and promote the changes. You can also watch the promotion status here. Now we have the changes in the integration branch. So let's go and verify our change in the integration branch. you can further promote the changes to the uat branch you can see that we have promote work item as a bundle button in uat instead of promote selected that is because i have marked this stage as bundling stage now it additionally asks us to give a version number here we are bundling together all the changes as a version and promote to the pre production environment Finally you can promote the changes to the production org and verify the changes one stop support for you to get started with devops center is the devops center trailblazer community group join this group for updates and resources also you can check the dynamic roadmap of devops center for the latest features if you like this video please click the like button and subscribe to get notifications for any new videos that are added to salesforce developers youtube channel thanks for watching this video stay tuned for more videos